Ahoy friends! Welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan, and this is a project to build a Chamberlain-style racing dory from John Gardner's The Dory Book. Illustrations by Sam Manning. Today we'll be out in the shop, and we're going to finish, hopefully, finish up the... Uh, centerboard mechanism that raises and lowers the centerboard. Uh, we may also do a bit of uh, ore making and uh, ore oiling, so we'll see when we get out there. I'm Pike. I'm making uh, ores for Dan's Alpha Dory. And, uh, Made them out of uh, a spruce staging plank we got from a local. We went through a number of planks looking for those with straight grain and small knots. And Dan ended up with two planks, one for his spars, the boom and the, the mast. And he gave me the other one, second one, for making oars. And I was able to get two pair of nine foot oars out of the one staging plank. The, uh, we cut out the With a saw, you power saw, you cut out the rough pattern, the loom and the blade, and you might wonder how you get two nine foot planks out of a 16, two, nine, two pair of nine foot oars out of a 16 foot plank. Blades are at the end of this 10 foot wide plank. The blades are four and a half inches wide, and the handles are only two inches. So we can get, and they, they go down the center of the plank, the 16 foot plank, past each other total of eight, eight inches. You want as much weight as you can get up in the loom, up near the handles, to compensate for all the ore sticking out in the water beyond the ore lock. You want to balance them out. So the loom here, from handle to here, Goes from uh, two inches diameter up near the handle down to one and a half inches. And then you use a, a draw knife, a good sharp draw knife, and a spoke shave. And uh, go from four sides down to eight sides. Take off the 45 degrees of the corners, each corner. You end up with eight sides. Then you take down the, all the corners of the eight sides. So you're 16. And then with a spoke shave, you round, round them up nicely, or roughly, I should say. The way you finish them off is with coarse sandpaper. When we made, the, when I made them before with a rowing club years ago, we'd use number 60 or 
54 sander paper. We cut it into strips and you put it around the ore. And use it like you're rubbing yourself with a towel. Like this. And that rounds them right up. The blade is a hot pot. You want a, th a blade no bigger than a half an inch thick at the end. You want to get weight off down here. I've gone down to under five eighths to half on these. The thing you got to watch out for are knots. That's why Dan had to go through and 20, 15 or 20 planks to get two good ones. You don't want things like this, but it's off to the side, so this is all right. If it were here going through the center, I wouldn't be able to use it. So when you cut out your oars with a the, uh, skill saw, you try to avoid the knots as much as you can. These are good tight knots, so I'm not worried about them. Then the last step, after you've smoothed them down nice, is you leather them. But Dan and I didn't want to have thick leathers, so we got tried something new. My friend gave me some canvas, and we wrapped about three layers, four layers of canvas around, all one piece, wrapped it around. But as we do it, we put this glue that Dan's always using, tight bond free. We lay it on the one, one turn around and then spread it out with our fingers and keep going, putting down a layer of glue and a layer of cloth. We did this about four hours ago today, so it's already hard as a rock, and in time we'll get even even hotter. And we think that should protect, we haven't done it before, we think that should protect the oars for quite a while. Probably not as good as leather, but we don't know yet. We're using long oars, nine, nine and a half, Somebody said we should have nine and a half for the width of Dan's boat. But he's tried these oars now, and he says that we've tried these oars now, and he says the nine, nine foot is just right for the uh, boat that he just launched. It's kind of fun making oars. It's, it's more fun than paying. $600 or $700, John and Tenny's for, uh, for, for large oars like this. And it took me about probably 20 hours. I'm retired, so I'm not worried about hours. The, uh, to make the two pair of oars that you see here. And now what I'm doing, well, one thing I interestingly did, you've probably often seen oars with a strip of copper around the bottom of the blade to keep them from splitting. But I found that uh, using something like uh, two-part resin, a resin and a hardener, you mix it up and you stand these up in a container with some of the resin in it and it goes right up through the vessel of the spruce. It'll go up an inch or so in just a few minutes. And today we did it. We started to harden almost immediately, but we think we've got a a half an inch of resin down here on the edge. 
and it's hot as a rock. That's much better than the, I think, than the using a ring of copper. And now they've, I'm doing the final thing. We used to, in the rowing club days, we'd use linseed oil. Dan had some uh, marine teak oil left over from something that he just gave me. So I'm using that. But in the future, I'll, I'll probably use, uh, every year I'll put on a layer of uh, linseed oil. And to get the best effect out of that, you do it when it's warm and use a mix of uh, linseed oil and thinner. And it'll absorb right in. And you do that once a year. And the ores become black in time. Our rowing club oars were after a dozen years were just as dark as could be. And of course that preserves the wood. Well one thing I never do, don't uh, don't put anything on the handle. Your sweat will preserve this wood. It feels a lot better if it has no no finish on it. It's just the, the plain old wood. You could use ash, but ash is much heavier. And in the rowing club, we made up about 10 or 15 pairs. And uh, they lasted a long time. It's a fun project. We, we did it in the rowing club. We had a bunch of high school kids and uh, we'd, get a, we'd get draw knives and uh, spoke shaves at a real shop. Oh, we'd use hand planes too. In some places the, the hand plane is, is real good. Especially if you've got some knots or rough places where the grain isn't smooth. You just use a sharp hand plane and get it get it right down to the thickness or roundness you want. Notice I'm painting right up and to the uh, the hard nerve and right and. Uh, resin that I used on these ends. I'll smooth these off later. I'll probably use a, a hand sander and just take that right down and it'll look good. I like the looks of them. Applying oil year after year, and they get nice and dark, a nice looking, make beautiful looking ore. I suppose if you paid us 10 bucks an hour, these would be expensive ores too. But we just have fun doing it. Dan, Dan and the other boys in the club, that was 30 years or so ago, they helped with the making of the oars.
Sold them all they ever need in about ore building. Yep. See if the hacksaw does any better. Alright, so we'll try a fresh blade. Starat Manufacturing Co. Made in the US of A. See how this does. Definitely biting better. Just taking my time on it. Alright, well, I'm not gonna video. I'm not gonna video cutting through this entire, uh, this entire uh, Galvi rod, but uh, you get the point.
Yeah, now I'm wondering if I should have drilled through the other end. If I should have done this on the other end because this looks like it's worked hard. Off a bit more. Still need to take off a bit more on the side, so I'm just going to keep doing this until we get the uh, dimension here down to a spot where it'll uh, fit between the tangs. So that's the uh, centerboard rod hot off the presses and into a bucket of uh, flood penetrol to cool off. And uh, as it cools, it'll be soaking up that penetrol into all the pores of the iron.
Yeah, it definitely helps to drill a, I guess you'd call it a pilot hole. It's a, you use a small drill to drill out the web of the bigger drill, and then the bigger drill goes a lot faster. So, um, yeah, so we got that. Got to drill another hole on the other end for the handle. Then we'll be ready to knock this, uh, knock this assembly together, which may actually just happen next video. Thanks so much for stopping by building the Alpha Dory. Looking forward to seeing everybody uh, next video and uh, out on the water sometime super soon. Yeah, a massive thank you to everyone who's liked, subscribed, and supported the channel. Uh, you guys are why we do this. And uh, yeah, huge thank you to everybody who's dropped tools and little items by the shop as well. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, God bless and see everybody next video.